It said Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Bring it Go ahead. Up. Judah mourning. It says Judah mourning. Three. And the gates thereof languish. And our gates, our leadership, our elder men, our politicians, our, our, our warriors, and do what? They are black. They are what? They are black unto the ground. The tribe of Judah is black unto the ground, meaning they come from the dust of the ground. When you see that ground right there, they are black unto the ground. So first and foremost, the tribe of Judah, they are black people, right? Brick. Kill each other because they don't see each other in Jesus Christ. Yeah, here's the light from the time to do. Let's look to Hebrews uh, 7 and 14. Because they don't see each other in Jesus Christ. What you got, bro? He asked me, I told him I know that we're Israelites. Okay. I told him I didn't remember what tribe we're from. You don't remember what tribe you're from? Let me ask you a question. What do you identify yourself with on this side right here? African American, West Indian, where your father from? Father from, uh, born in New York, so we're from. From New York, so you're African American black, right? Yeah. So that'll mean that you're from the tribe of Judah. See, what color was the tribe of Judah? Well, there's black Jews as well, so from the Palasha tribe, or black Jews as well. You sure? They were not black Jews, they were not black Jews. All of the Jews were black. That's, That's right. right. Those same white people that call themselves Jewish today, that's a, they're not Jews at all. Right. They are Jewish, meaning they're fake Jews, they're false Jews. They're right. something like a Jew. They're right. trying to be a Jew. Right. You are a Jew. I get Genesis chapter 49. Let's see what's going on with Judah. How do we know that the people here in America, the so-called black man, is of the tribe of Judah? We'll just start at verse 12. The book of Genesis 12, chapter 12. 49. Verse 8. And verse 8. Judah, uh -huh. thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. It says, Judah, you are he whom your brethren shall praise. Right? Think about it. We're here in America, right? They call a black man lazy. Oh, our own brothers do that. From the West Indian to the Hispanics. We're the ones known as slaves, yet they were brought as slaves too. Right? right? But it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brother. Where are they trying to go now? Where are the Haitians trying to come to? Where do the Puerto Ricans try to come to? Where do the Mexicans try to come to? Deep. Where do all these other tribes, what land do they try to go to? The land that Judah built. Right. He says, you black man, are he who your brother shall praise, read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. It says Judah. The tribe of Judah is going to, his hand is going to be in the neck of his enemies. Can I be in the neck of my enemy or if I'm not living with him? Deep. Or living in the land of our enemies? No, right? Guess what? We're the only tribe that has no other place to go. Right. The West Indians, they can go back to Jamaica or, or Trinidad, right? The Puerto Ricans, they can go back to Puerto Rico. The Haitians, they can go back to Haiti and be amongst themselves. There ain't that many white people in Haiti. Right. Right? But Judah, <laughs> where we at? We can't go around the block without seeing an Edomite or a white man. Right. And God forbid we try to go to a nice neighborhood or a nice supermarket or a good school. Where are we going to be at? We're going to be surrounded by them. Right. It says, Judah, read it again. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Because contrary to what anybody says, spiritually as well as physically, Judah, the black man, is the best at anything. That's, That's right. right. I'm just being real. The tribe of Judah, read Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Our hand's going to be in the neck of our enemies. We're going to be right next to our enemy. And we're going to constantly be fighting against them. That's where you get your civil rights movement from. Those slave rebellions. Nat Turner, Desmond Bessie, Harriet, even our sisters was hard. Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth. All of these people. Um, Rosa Parks. Right? Julie Reed. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. It says our father's children. Why is our father's children? Why are the other tribes going to bow down before us, though? Is the question. Read. Judah is a lion's whelp. Go to read Deuteronomy 33. 
for Judah. Because it says, Thy father's children shall bow down before the tribe of Judah, right? How y'all brothers doing? How we doing? We're going, over, we're going over nationality and we're What's showing the so-called black man that you are actually an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Now we read in Genesis where it says, Thy father's children shall bow down before you. Judah, right? He's talking about the other tribes. Get Deuteronomy 33. Verse 7. The book, of Deuter the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and verse 7. We're going over the tribe of Judah. Now he says, Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. It says, Judah shall be in the neck of his enemy, meaning we'll be in close quarters with the same people that brought us over here in slavery. Read. And this is the blessing of Judah. It says, This is the blessing of Judah. Read. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. It says, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, because Judah are the ones that's out here teaching and prophesying. Ain't no Mexican going out here with, with camp signs. You've seen Israelites before. Ain't no Mexicans going out there teaching you who you are. It says Judah's going to do that. And that's coming right here in America. Right. The black men in America is the ones going out teaching their people who they are, going over nationality. Read. The voice of Judah. Hear the voice of Judah because we're out here preaching this gospel. Read. And bring him unto his people. And bring Judah to his people. So guess what? As y'all brothers learn who you are and learn this word, we're coming to our people, meaning we're going out and teaching the Hispanics. We're teaching the West Indians who they are. Read. Let his hands be sufficient for him. It says, let his hands be sufficient for him. Make, make us be able to get it done. Read. And be thou an help to him from his enemies. And be a help to us from our enemies. So guess what? Do we, we don't, we don't um, deal with Christianity, right? And we don't really agree with everything Martin Luther King taught. But guess what? What Martin Luther King did allows us to be on the street that they teaching our people. Right. He sacrificed his life right. so that we can have freedom of speech out here. Because if it was the 50s and the 60s and if it was without the civil rights movement, we probably would have got our heads beaten by now. Teach. You understand that? So the Most High God has ways to make our hands sufficient. Is that it on that read? Uh, That's it. Give me Zechariah. Four, is it um, Tents of Judah? Zechariah 13, real quick. So we're dealing with the Tents of Judah. And how we know that the black man is Judah. Now we show that they were black people, right? And the first people to wake up is going to be who? Read. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, and verse 7. The Lord, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord is going to save the tents. The Lord is going oh, to yeah. wake up the Thanks. tents of Judah first. He's going to wake us up first. So I'm going to ask you again. What nation of people is out here preaching this gospel on these streets here, showing the so-called black man that you are actually an Israelite according to the Bible? It's the black man here in America, right? It's not nobody. You ain't being taught that in the West Indies right. or in Brazil. We're going to those places and teaching our people, showing them who they are. That's how we know that we're Judah. Read on. That the glory of the house of David. That the glory of the house of David. Read. And the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Because these other tribes here, they like to magnify themselves against the black man here in America. Right. Even though we're the same people. The Most High God gave us this wisdom here so that we can, they cannot magnify themselves against us. But they can't say, oh, the black man's lazy. No, you got to come to the black man to get salvation. Right. You understand that? Read on. And that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So in that day, the Lord's going to defend him. One more thing with Judah. Give me um, salvation of the Jew. That's John 4. Salvation is of the Jew. And we're going to deal with that. Because we're showing the black man, look, you are an Israelite according to the tribe. I mean, you're the Israelite according to the Bible from the tribe of Judah. The Bible shows us. That's how we can identify every single tribe based off the prophecies that's written. I'm dealing with black men here, so we're showing you the prophecies of yours. Read. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 22. Now, this is Christ dealing with the Samaritan woman. Let's see what Christ said, where salvation comes from, because the, the black man was given his wisdom first so that we can teach our people. Read. Ye worship, ye know not what. Go ahead. We know what we worship. We know what we worship. How? Read. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. Right. Salvation is of Judah. Salvation is going to come from the teachings of Judah. Salvation, guess who's from Judah? Who's from Judah? Who's a prominent man as a, a direct descendant of the so-called black man? But what great man is gonna give us salvation? Where we get our salvation from? All right. What's up, what's up, from Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was a black man. That's from right. A tribe of what? Give me that in Hebrews. You know what I want. Look at Hebrews chapter seven and verse 14. Says, salvation is of the Jew. Let's see what Jew is going to give us salvation. For it is evident. It, says, it is evident that what? 
That our Lord? It said that our Lord, our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, not this image here. The Bible does not depict Christ as this. The Bible shows that Christ was a man that had skin, brass burned in a furnace and hair like wool. Not that white man. He says our Lord sprang where? Sprang out of Judah. Jesus Christ sprang from the tribe of Judah. That's why salvation is from Judah. That's why the spirit of Christ jumped on the tribe of Judah right here in America first. So that we can teach our people. Right. So do you understand that you're from the tribe of Judah? Most definitely. Most definitely. Let's not miss the bus last time, but I appreciate this, man. I appreciate this. All praises. Okay. We're going to show you one more thing, though. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Symbolizes life. How? I know what it, I know what it means now. The head is, is the vagina, and the, and the thing is the penis, and the offspring is the arms, right? Yeah. Brother, that's an idol, and it's an Egyptian idol. Right. You understand that? We're not from Egypt. Though. Right. Let me show you something. Give me um Isaiah chapter thirty, and then let me show you something. We're gonna go on to something else, okay, but there's one thing you need to know. Okay, well, I can't stay long, but okay, I gotta get. I got you. Okay. I got you. Well, we got to okay. deal with that. We got to deal with that on. Um, okay. Because that's not what that not that doesn't symbolize life, right? Let me show you. Read X, Isaiah 30, read verse one. The book of Isaiah chapter 30, verse one. Go ahead. Woe to the rebellious children, uh -huh. saith the Lord, Go ahead. that take counsel but not of me. That get their understanding and their wisdom, but not according to this Bible here. You didn't learn about that on um, in the Bible, right? So it says you take counsel, but not of the God of this Bible read. And they're covered with a covering. You cover with a covering. You cover yourself. You learn and you and you and you you guide yourself with a covering, but read. But not of my spirit. But not of the spirit of God. Read. That they may add sin to sin. That you can remain in sin because that aunt doesn't teach you that you are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. And that aunt doesn't teach you that today is a Sabbath day and to keep it holy. That aunt doesn't teach you to stop eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. That aunt doesn't teach you that Christmas is of the devil. Yeah. You understand that? Read. That walk to go down into Egypt. That does what? That walk to go down into Egypt. That wants to go down into Egypt to go back and follow in the Egyptian ways and customs. Read. And have not asked at my mouth. And haven't asked of God's mouth. Read. To strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. Strengthen yourself as an Egyptian. That's what our people like to do. So we got the Nefertiti charms. We got the Egyptian arts. We you say Ashe, all that other stuff. But that's not of us. We strengthen ourselves in that because we're trying to search who we are. We're lost. Read. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Because they trust in the shadow of Egypt. What our black man don't understand is in Egypt, you was a slave. In Egypt, the Egyptians was oppressing you, black man from the tribe of Judah. They are your enemies, the so-called Africans. You're not Egyptian. Read. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be what? Be your shame. So all of our brothers in Egyptology, that strength, when destruction comes, it's going to be your shame. Why? Because you're not going to get the salvation that's ordained for you, brother. Dealing with that unk. Read. And the trust in shadow of Egypt. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt. Acting like dealing in Egyptology is going to help you read. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Your confusion. Because yeah, the Egyptians yeah. are the ones that had you in slavery. Right. And their brothers, the Nilotic Africans, are the ones that actually handed you over to the white man. Right. We were at war with the Africans. We're not Africans. Right. You understand that? Give me um, Exodus, and then we're going to let you go in a second. Yeah, yeah i got to get this, get this bus. Man. So, but what, well, what, what are you supposed to do with that idol? Well, Give me life, Proverbs 7, verse 2. We're going to show you what life is. Okay. Forget Exodus. Proverbs 7, verse 2. Because that's not symbolic of life. You're not living because you have an onk on your neck. Here's how you start living. Read. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Go ahead. Keep my commandments and live. You start living once you start following God's laws. 
once you start understanding, I ain't a black man no more. I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. I'm God's chosen people. Now, now you living, you're not dead no more. I'm not eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster no more. My, my temple is holy. I can't put that poison in my body. I gotta stop smoking cigarettes. Now you living, because anything else, you're killing yourself. Right. You're only killing yourself by defiling your temple and breaking God's laws. So life comes, read that again. Keep my commandments and live. Read. And my law and as the law of God is what? As the apple of thine eye. Not that idol. You understand? That idol is something that does not help you and it actually teaches you lies. Get it back in two. Oh, get that, get that real quick. This is what we're supposed to do with these idols. And look, I used to wear a cross around my neck. Right? I used to have those things, but it didn't teach me who I was. And as a matter of fact, it led me into a life of, of degeneracy. Sleeping around, having abortions, selling drugs. Them idols didn't help me at all. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 22. Go ahead. No. Ye shall defile it says also. We shall defile that thing. Right. We should not have no Christian cross, uh, cross around our neck. Our forefather was murdered and brutalized on that thing. Right. You might as well be walking around with a damn golden noose around your neck. Right. It's the same thing. Christ was tortured on a cross. Right. The black Christ. Why in the world we want to symbolize that? Read. You shall defile also the covering of thy graven so image. So we defile that thing. We hate that thing. Free Of silver. Of silver like yours. Oh, go ahead. And the ornament, ornament of thy molten images of gold. And the golden or ornament of images. Read. Thou shalt cast them away. We shall take those images and do what? Thou shalt cast them away. As a what? As a menstrual cloth. As a menstrual cloth. Our sisters wear maxi pads or tampons and things of that nature. That's how we should view a menstrual cloth, but when a sister actually uses it, that's how we should build that cross around our neck. Oh, oh Jesus right. Christ. You know what you do with that? It says cast that thing away, because it's a teacher of lies. Get it back in chapter two. Okay, and after this, I have to break. Bro. I have to You're break good, break, bro. Break, I appreciate, break, appreciate break, your time, man. Okay. Appreciate, appreciate your time. We're just trying to help our people and enlighten our people of the truth about this Bible here. Oh, yeah. And who we really are. Read. The book of Habakkuk, chapter two and verse 18. Go ahead. What profited the graven image? Because what profited the graven image? What benefited that drug dealer, that dope boy that's out there selling death and poison to their people that think they got a, a platinum crucifix around his neck? What wisdom do you have? What wisdom does that sister that's out there selling her body but she got a gold cross around her neck? Yeah, is it what profit is it? Okay, you good, you good, you good, free. You good, baby. What profit the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it? Free. The molten image. It's a molten image and what else is it? And a teacher of lies. It's a teacher of lies. It teaches you that you're an African-American. Right. It teaches you that color doesn't matter. It teaches you that the color of Christ doesn't matter. Right. It teaches you that you don't have to keep God's laws. All you got to do is love each other. It teaches you to live a life of sin and lies. That's what that cross and those graven images do to us. Read. And a teacher of lies that the maker of his works trusted therein. That the maker of his works trusted therein, read. To make dumb idols. To make a dumb idol. It doesn't do anything for us. So our job is to come out and show our people who we are according to the Bible. The sad part is, two thirds of our people is gonna shut up and die because they don't wanna hear this word. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth